I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Crusader Industries Mercury Star Runner, and we're starting right now. Crusader Industries, a journey worth taking. Systems on. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Crusader Mercury Star Runner. We'll cover a brief overview, show off some skin, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and I'll give you my thoughts on the Mercury Star Runner. I'll be skipping the tour on this one. If you'd like to see a tour, check out my first look. I covered everything, but I missed this one access panel. I know this review is a little late, but you know you already bought it anyway. At this point, I'm just here to make you feel good about your purchase. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Mercury Star Runner is a courier spacecraft designed by Crusader Industries. Used by the United Empire of Earth Navy in the blockade running operations, the Mercury is a fast armored runner ship capable of transporting small quantities of valuable goods or storing cryptid information on board its computers. The belligerent Duck, a Mercury Star Runner operated by criminals, famously escaped the Terra system to Banu space despite a significant amount of pursuers in 2948. Crusader Industries is a human spacecraft and spacecraft component manufacturer, one of four corporations in the United Empire of Earth to own a planet. Crusader Industries designs and constructs its spacecrafts in the upper atmosphere of Crusader, all while the corporation and its employee inhabitants reside on a latticework of floating colony platforms. As of today, the Star Runner is available for sale and upgrade on the Pledge Store for $225 War Bond and $260 Standalone. It is available in the Ground Air Enterprise Pack for $295 War Bond and $330 Standalone. This pack comes with the Tumbrel Cyclone and the Ranger CV. It is also available in the Frontier Choppers Pack for $625 War Bond and $695 Standalone. This pack includes a Warlock, Argo SRV, Buck, and a Vulture. In my opinion, none of these packs are worth the money unless you plan on using some of the other ships as LTI tokens. The MSR is a loaner for the Genesis Starliner and all of the Star Lifters. Upgrading your cat to the C2 gets my recommendation. You have a cat and an MSR until the C2 comes out. The C2 will have over 600 SCU. The Star Runner has three alternative paint skins available. The Polar Paint Skin, the Sky Rider Paint Skin, and one that we don't speak about here at Subliminal's channel because I can't have one because I wasn't around to play some stupid game back in 2018. Now that we know a little bit more about the Mercury Star Runner, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected 10 ships, mostly multi-crew ships, the Max, Herald, and a Starter. The Google Sheet document with this data is linked in the description. The Crusader Mercury Star Runner weighs in at over 1.6 million kilograms and takes ninth place. It fits in at 56 meters in length and takes 7th place. It totes 114 SCU of cargo and takes 3rd place. It has a max crew size of 5 and ties in 3rd place. It carries 9,740 quantum fuel units and takes 2nd place. This is a crazy amount of QT fuel. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 215 meters per second and takes 1st place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1287, second only to the other data runner. And with it being such a large tanky ship, this means that whatever can catch up to it probably won't be able to take it down. It has a maximum pitch rate of 50 degrees per second and ties in third place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 50 degrees as well and takes third place. It has a maximum roll rate of 125 degrees per second and ties in first place. It has a hull HP of 59,400 and takes second place. Considering the Carrick is twice the length, this is insane. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 0% and takes eighth place. It has an energy armor damage reduction of 0% as well and takes eighth place again. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%. No ships on this list have any stealth reductions. It shoots peas with a default pilot DPS of 880 and takes 7th place. But it blasts its way in with a default turret DPS of 1760 and takes 4th place. It has a stock missile payload of over 22,000 and takes 7th place. 
and the Mercury Star Runner is the only ship not available for sale in-game. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. It will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. All right, before we weigh some of the pros and cons, just know that my template here has only 10 slots and it's a bitch to change. So I'll speak all of my pros, but only show the top 10. First, it's fast as fuck in both SCM and especially its max speed. Its multi-crew gameplay is great. Now with two turrets and it will be even better when someone can work that scanner. The damage potential with all of the guns manned is excellent. The cargo space is excellent as well with 114 SEU. Of course, there are ships with larger capacity, but imagine being able to pick up and sell data simultaneously with cargo in the future. Having almost 10k quantum fuel units is outmatched pound for pound. The fastest, most inefficient drive can make a trip from PO to Microtech seven times. I wish I could replace some of that with hydrogen fuel. The hidden underbelly is great. I can't wait for when it's possible to be disabled and boarded by enemies. They'll be playing whack-a-mole for hours trying to find me. The hidden cargo is great to have if you sell vice. Its acceleration is great. Using Legacy Fleet Spat Tool, let's compare it to some of its competitors. Here it is versus the Connie. This is how it stacks up to the Cuddy. And finally, just for shits and giggles, let's see how it does against the Saber. I'll just leave that up there for a few seconds while I continue with the other half of these pros. Its atmospheric flight is great for its size. Its agility is great as well for its size. Its hull HP is out of this world. Its storage space is superb. Make sure you watch my Make It Fit video. Having redundant components for now means that you can run a full stealth build at no cost to performance. The cabin space is very spacious. Plenty of room for crew and amenities to keep them comfortable. Although the pilot DPS isn't great, having them gimbaled helps out a lot. I love adding cannons that I wouldn't normally dream of putting on such a ship this size. And finally, most importantly, it's beautiful. For cons, I would say its pilot DPS could be better, but it's understandable that not every ship can be a solo combat ship. It only has one entry exit point. I love to see another entrance near that long hallway towards the bridge. Um, this is where I'm going to have to start nitpicking so people don't call me an MSR ship. It doesn't have an ejection system. I feel like such a high tech ship should come with remote turrets. Also, after some testing, it looks like placing handheld illegal cargo or players with crime stat in the hidden cargo area does not prevent you from being scanned or attacked by the UEE, but maybe this might be something that they'll have working in the future. And there's something else, but I can't remember it right now. I'll have to get back to you if I do. All right, so what are my thoughts? Come on, you guys know I love this thing. I have never been able to come up with so many pros for a single ship before. It does have some cons, but a lot of them are no big deal. Oh shit, that's right. The final con is that its hydrogen fuel consumption requires you to fucking refuel after every box mission. And you'll probably have to spend more money on fuel than you make completing the mission. This is very annoying, but I've heard rumors that the 312 Evocati have seen a fix for this. Although at this time, I'm not sure if it's slightly better or drastically better. Regardless, I'm a proud owner of this beautiful ship, and it's become my everyday driver for now. And if the fix to the hydrogen fuel happens, it will just sweeten the pot. I even have a second one for my C2 loaner, so I don't have to wait for the claim times. I could talk about this ship for days, but if you're looking for a great all around excellent multi-crew ship, the MSR gets my endorsement. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the Mercury Star Runner here. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending out for UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like.
Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.